Hello and welcome, I'm Nafe42 and in this episode I'm going to show you how to use Prusa Control. Okay, so on my other screen I have a, well it's just my desktop actually, and there's a load of different files for a OctoPi, Octo, you know, Raspberry Pi case that I'm going to be printing out. Um, I haven't seen all the models that are here, so I have to like kind of dissect which ones we do and don't need. Um, but yeah, there's a huge list of them. Uh, that is this with this one actually there is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven files. I've opened up Prusa Control. This is what you see. This is the the Prusa i3 Mark III print bed, uh, and it shows you the area that you can print here. And it even shows you a, like a, a skybox of where you can print. So anything within this box is game for print. Over here you have the printer settings. Um, so I'm just going to drag one file in and have a look. So this is the spool case. Hmm, interesting. Uh, this is a uh, another one. So if you drag different files in, they will automatically position themselves and in this case pretty badly actually so if we sit no, I mean, okay so sometimes this uh, auto arrange doesn't really work great yeah so that doesn't really help but you can move that there and move that there and then look they both fit on the bed they're both pretty good uh, they are both set for the opposite side I believe I think that's what the difference is here uh, and it has here a big wheel. Uh, the wheel is, um, from what I can tell, so I want to have all my electronics on the left side of the case, so we'll just stick with the left stuff uh, here. Um, so yeah, you can press delete on them and get them out of here. We have here a uh, thing for scale. Uh, obviously we can't scale zero objects, so let's try and find something really small. Let's see. Where we could pie case mount? Uh, oh, that's the camera mount. Um, so yeah, eventually I'm going to get a Raspberry Pi camera and I'll use that to do the time lapses and stuff for the uh, for for this, uh, for this channel. So yeah, if we look over here, you have material. So you can choose the material that you're going to be using and that will give it the basic kind of uh, material temperatures and that kind of stuff. You have quality here, so you can go ultra detail, which is point five millimeter or fast which is point two point zero five millimeter sorry for ultra detail or point two point two is kind of like the standard which you print um, if you wanted to make a fairly good object and you wanted to make it fairly quick uh, I, with the Prusa I, I'd say everything is a little bit slower than you could uh, than, than some printers I'd say you could probably print a lot faster Probably even on the Prusa, actually, you probably print a lot faster on the Prusa um, than it does let off. But this does guarantee fairly decent quality in Prusa control. Um, and yeah, now that is the arm for it. You can scale it. So, I mean, if it's something that wasn't meant to be a precise fit, uh, you could say, okay, I'll press scale. Over here, you've got scale, and you could say, I'm going to make it like uh, 120 times the size. Uh, which point two bigger than what it is normally, uh, and then there you go. You have the uh, object sitting there as if it was uh, that that size. You can position it. You can rotate it. Now that rotate thing doesn't automatically rotate to to fit make things lay on the bed. So sometimes you do have to be careful with that because if it's like that, you're not going to have a good print. I'm just saying, because I've done that with a couple of things and it's just really messed the prints up. Um, you have here the rotation, so you can click that and if you really want you can just kind of, oh, you can click that and then you can just kind of, oh, I thought you could rotate it, but I guess you can't. Oh, okay, that's the other software then. I mean, it makes it seem fairly pointless um, if you can't do that, but yeah, whatever. Over here you do have place on bed, so that will automatically set the Z, the lowest Z, to zero on the bed. 
Um, if you want to do support, you've got support, build plate everywhere, and you've got brim as well, just in case it's like a, a an object that doesn't have much touch in the bed. Sometimes they can come detached from the bed, and a brim does definitely help with that. Up here you have import model, multi-part model, g-code file. You can actually import g-code files in here and see what the g-code file is, just in case you have forgotten what was in that file. Um, and then you have open and save project. I never save projects from here because I just find it completely pointless. It's literally just like an in-out program, you know what I mean? That you just kind of go in. Um, you got the version and stuff. Uh, it, it always it always seems to remind me when there is a different version or whatever. So so yeah, I mean I, I guess it will do that to you as well. You have the language, the printer variation. So you can change the nozzle size here, just in case you put uh, put a different nozzle on a 0.25 to try and get some better quality, or a 0.6 to make a better fast print. Uh, or to get better speed, I should say. 0.4 is like a standard, um, and that's a, it's a good one to go for if you're not doing quality or or going for speed. Uh, it's just a, it's the perfect in between, we should say. Um, so yeah, now we have the object on here. Uh, it's an object that probably won't need any uh, bridging, I don't think. And even if it did have issues in there, it would fix it by the time it gets to the top layer. We're going to generate. That creates the G code for the file. You can still zoom and turn and stuff like that. Uh, over here, it tells you how much time it should take, roughly, how much filament it should take, roughly 2.9 meters. Um, I don't know how that boils out, but yeah, there we go. And then you can scroll down and it will show you the line that it first does. And then you can scroll up layer by layer and it will show you exactly what it's going to do. And that's pretty cool. Um, somehow you can change, you can add ch color change points in here. So I'm not sure if that means that you can go halfway through. Click that, and then it will ask you to switch the filament out, or if you need the color change uh, add-on. You know, the the five color color changer thing. Um, I I think that'd be a pretty cool thing to actually get in the future. But right now, for me. I'm still enjoying my time with this printer, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a really good printer. Highly recommend. Uh, so yeah, now you go save G code. It will automatically remember the SD card that you put into your computer. So it will say, "Here you go, is the Raspberry Pi." Um, there's all the stuff that I've recently done, and then it saves it. And there you go. Now you got your object, and it's actually ready on the SD card to go would be put into the printer and printed. Um, I mean that that's that's literally it. That's that's literally it with the Prusa control software. You do have an undo and a redo button up here. But I mean most of the time all you all you're gonna do most of the time the only things you're going to do with this is to drop something in like this. You'll say alright that's cool. Uh, that's pretty good. So we'll go down to mm, yeah sparse. We just want to Make a real quick print. Slice it. Scan up through it. Looks good to me. Click save G code. Save the G code. And then you whack the card out and stick it in the printer. Very nice. Very easy. Very good software. So, yeah, that is it for this time. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Don't you think for me, Twitter, that's at 842 And thanks for watching.